Hi guys, it's Capricious Conch here. Um, I'm on day three of quitting marijuana. And I have to tell you, previous times have been a lot more difficult. Like, a lot more difficult. You know, this time I followed some special strategies. First of all, um, some people may think it's counterproductive, but I've been using psychedelics within the past six months, let's say at a somewhat frequent rate of once every two weeks or so. Um, and sure, it's another drug or whatever, but it actually has helped immensely. And, you know, right now I'm, I'm not using psychedelics. I'm not using weed. I'm on day three. And I, I, I can tell you I couldn't feel better. My brain is way more active. I've been just watching a shitload of educational videos. Um, I have a habit of going outside to smoke, um, to spend time in nature and stuff. So I've still been going out and spending time in nature. So perhaps that's been filling some of my habitual patterns as well. But I like that because, you know, I need to go outside. And in the absence of smoking weed, I can do other stuff like to sing or, what well, you know, I already do that, but like run around and stuff, exercise. But I, I notice I've got a lot more attention to detail. Of course, psychedelics have really helped with that as well. Um, but really focusing on keeping my environment nice and tidy, um, cutting off all these tasks that I've put behind me with weed because I was stressed about them. Um, obviously, as you can tell, I'm not stressed right now. I expected that I probably would be. Uh, my rule of thumb is to give myself a week. Um, I don't want to say expect that you're going to feel like shit for a week, but if you feel like shit during the week upon which you're quitting, you have to know why that is. You know, like, you may have perfectly good reasons to feel like shit, but you can cope with that if your brain isn't already in withdrawal or remission or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, I will say that um, the barrier in my mind between me and creating music has become a little bit denser because I normally use weed to help get rid of that barrier so that I can have like a more natural flow and I haven't felt very natural but my feeling is that if I keep practicing even though it might take weeks or months to get back to that feeling of natural flow the more that I work on it the more it's going to become natural to me and I think you know, cannabis and psychedelics especially have been a really great tool in getting me to feel and understand, experience that sense of flow and that sense of communion or transcription of music from these alternate sources. You know, I don't write my own music. Sometimes I write my own music when I'm sitting there thinking, all right, what's the next word? What should I put in here? What, what's a good thing that rhymes that also makes sense? and sends a message and tells a story, you know? When, I, when I'm writing like that, I'm thinking about it. And you, you could say it might be coming from my mind, but most of the writing that I do, most of the singing that I do, the beatboxing, whatever, it's just all like freestyle now. There was a while I was just so, uh, what's the word, neurotic about my music. And I, I wanted, I wasn't making very much music because I wanted everything to be perfect you know, I, I didn't want to fuck things up. I wanted it to look good and feel good. And, you know, I wanted to be able to perform it right away somewhere. And, you know, ultimately I did make some some good songs that I enjoyed and I did perform them. Um, but it, it was a very neurotic quest. And shortly after this, I, I have a very bad sense of um, my internal energy reserves. So I was, I was sort of beating this music thing to death for a little while, and then I guess I must have burnt out because I wasn't interested in it at all for a while. Um, and then I came back, and uh, as you know with any skill, after not having used it for a while, you come back, you're going to feel like you're stepping into a new body or something because um, the work that you have done... See, we all think that, you know... You do 10 push-ups, you've just done 10 push-ups, you know? You've done the work, now the work is done. Well, the work continues 
to unwind itself throughout time. So you spend five hours, six hours, whatever, working on music in a particular day. And let's say you spend a week working on music that whole time and then you burned out and you stop for a while. That work is being continued to be done in your mind and your mind's also somewhat expecting something musical to go on. So when you stop, it's just kind of doing it in the background. So there's these gears turning in your brain that you don't have to do it. So I think we really underappreciate uh, the meaning and the effect of our work um, at the time and afterwards. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, I'm on day three. You know, I've been taking a more active role in my life. Um, I think this has been extremely important to my success so far. Um, also at this time, um, I'm kind of keeping my distance from people, trying to spend mostly time by myself, but you know, I think it's, a, it's good to have balance. Um, I'm somewhat of an introverted, extroverted person. Um, I, I would describe myself as someone that highly yearns for social connection until he gets it and then doesn't want anything to do with it for a while. Um, so yeah, you know, I've been spending some time with my friends and stuff. I don't have a lot of friends in the area right now, but my one friend anyway, I saw him the other day, and I might see him again today, but um, mostly I've just been been turning to the, the concept of Buddhism quite a lot, to let go of things, to not be so attached to everything, to not expect things to be one way or another, you know, to not let stress be the, the leader and the dominant force in my life. So, you know, it's really a lot of mindfulness. It's a lot of breathing out negative emotions and energy, which ugh, our whole society is programmed to think is totally ridiculous. But if, if someone comes at you and they, they point in your face and they yell and they scream at you and they call you fucking bad words and stuff, and then they leave the room, you're going to be... <sighs> and you don't even know it. But then when someone suggests that you do that intentionally, you, you know, we think that it's pseudoscience. And, um, you know, science isn't capable of actually perceiving the majority of reality. So this thing called pseudoscience, we could just say uh, that it's a, a, a lumped group of things that science can't support. And, you know, science has a rather narrow area of focus to what we can measurably observe. And, you know, emotions, consciousness, you know, um, synchronicities, you can't measurably observe that. Um, anyway, the whole system's backwards. But I will tell you that psychedelics such as psilocybin ha have been very helpful. I think, you know, if, if you want to give your head a knock and wake yourself up, you want to unlock your creativity, I would turn to psilocybin. You know, maybe start with a gram or a half a gram. Um, and you want to pay special care to how you behave afterwards. Just like I was saying with um, music or exercise, the work that you're doing in the present is done into the future automatically. With psilocybin, I, I, I would say there's some work done automatically, but you have to be doing some other work as well. Like, for example, if you're playing music, you play a whole bunch of music, you get burnt out. Now, while your music is working internally, go read about music, go watch videos about music, you know, do whatever. Um, or take a break, it's up to you. But with this particular thing with psilocybin, a big part of it, what it does is it breaks down habitual patterns. So, and it, it opens your eyes to things that you never thought of or looked at. Um, so, you know, f for me, I, I stopped brushing my teeth because I was thinking about the fluoride in it. And I, I wasn't necessarily afraid of it, but I stopped doing it. And, you know, I had other methods of brushing them, kind of. But I, I kind of let it go for a bit because I didn't take an intention to rebuild habitual patterns that I did want to keep. Now, obviously the habitual pattern I wanted to get rid of was uh, the daily cannabis use. 
And I've found that if you're not distracting yourself, if you're not doing it for some sort of giggles experience, and if you pay respect to the set and the setting and you can manufacture a good trip for yourself, then it can be very, very helpful. Um, I, I would recommend that people have psilocybin in their system at least once a year. Um, but again, this is a thing where, you know, I, I don't expect a lot of conscientious people to go trying it because it, it might just not be within their archetype. I don't know. Um, I would really like to find out. Um, but yeah, you have to pay really special attention to um, the reformation of habits. And if you can, if you can link the bad habit that you want to get rid of to a new good habit, for example, with me, I was going, instead of going into my backyard to smoke weed, I would go out to the park every time. You know, I, I'm lucky enough, or unlucky enough, whatever, to be living with my parents right now, and you know, I can't smoke weed inside. That's a great thing. If you can go outside, if you can take a walk or a jog or a bike ride, go into nature and do it. You'll enjoy it a lot more, and if you can form a habit of doing that, then it's going to be very helpful to you. And even if you could form a habit of doing different things at the same time of day, every week or whatever, or every day, that will help you. Because when you do quit weed, you can go and do those exact same things, but then you can just have more mindfulness and focus and you know whatever on them and you'll have more time to do that so yeah it's day three it's going extraordinarily well I, I know this has been a big issue for a lot of people and a lot of people don't see the need to quit um, you know of course there's a lot of people using it for physical medical reasons me I used it for stress depression anxiety um, I used it for connection with nature and empathy and trying to understand um, abstract concepts about society and you know uh, I'm guessing it's the sativa part of the cannabis but I, I did find that helpful um, if you want to further explore the deep thinking aspect of things um, then LSD may be very helpful for you but you have to follow the same set and setting rules as with magic mushrooms um, you could have a bad trip if you don't respect and plan and ensure the set and setting which is your perspective and your environment um, very important um, but um, yeah once again LSD is my friend describes it as mushrooms take you for a ride and LSD you're the driver I think there's a bit of yin yang with those both you know there's an aspect of being taken for a ride and being the driver in both of them but um, let's say mushrooms your environment will ensure a good internal trip, whereas with LSD, your environment will ensure a very focused trip. Like um, if you have art supplies in front of you, you're going to be focused on them. Um, whereas with mushrooms, maybe you'd be more sporadic and do a whole lot really quickly. But anyway, um, I wouldn't worry too much about acid right now. This is more about quitting cannabis and uh, yes I found mushrooms helpful to that cannabis or LSD if you want to take it once just a tab if you can find it that will also break down some of your habitual patterns but um, I don't know I feel like if you have a lot of built up uh, let's say shadow um, if you know the Jungian concept um, it, it's going to show you that and with mushrooms or LSD, I'm sure, um, but I kind of got a lot of my shadow out of the way before that. Um, it can be very um, traumatic to experience the shadow because it's all of the repressed aspects of your personality that you, your ego, didn't agree with, but that occurred within you naturally. So it's parts of you that you've repressed that you, you you're afraid of. So and that you despise, that you cannot comprehend being a part of you. So, but then it's also going to connect you to other people. It's going to connect you to nature. It's going to 
to make you feel as if we are all one because we are all one we're all just extensions of this planet and its nutrients and you know before we died we were just nutrients in our mother's stomach or whatever and after we die we'll just be nutrients in a worm's stomach and then that will be nutrients in a bird's stomach and so on and so forth like the movie about Buddha the Great Departure where you know you know, the snake kills the tiger, the ants kill the snake, the fish eat the ants, the bear eats the fish, etc. So, and another thing with psychedelics is that I think it takes away a lot of our, our innate fears. Um, just as it's going to unlock stuff in the shadow, it also unlocks positive things from the shadow, things that were good that we didn't agree with. Um, yeah, for example, um, your ability to manifest scariness when desired. If you're in nature and an animal attacks you, you know, you might be a little bit less defenseless. Um, also, some of the, the positive things that we repress, acceptance of others, you know, non-judgment. Um, what else is there? Um, you know, we repress a lot of observations about things that are corrupt you know it it can be debilitating to be thinking about that what everything that's corrupt because there's a lot of it but uh, as Terence McKenna says well what are we gonna do about it what are you gonna do about it you know so I think that it really is a life-changing journey and you know if you can just quit cannabis you know that's great um, but then where are you you know you're still stuck in the same life you still have all the same reasons to be using cannabis. You still don't know how to change your life or even what needs to be changed. So, you know, I, I don't know how you could be successful. I, I see a lot of people with addictions, and I don't see a lot of stories of people kicking them. So, you know, I think this is about as good as it gets. I'm, I'm doing extremely well here, a lot better than I thought. And I have absolutely no intention to use cannabis right now. But what I do remember is that in the past when I've quit like this, there's been a point where I've been around my friends or around whoever, or I'm just like, eh, maybe it won't hurt. Uh, on that particular day, I wasn't feeling particularly creative. Maybe I was a little stressed, so eh, it can't hurt. And then another six months later, here I am quitting again. So definitely a huge thing to remember on you know, your second and third day throughout the week is, you know, don't succumb because you know you're not gonna like it you're gonna like it at first and then after a week or two you're gonna, you're gonna be, feel like shit and you're gonna be trapped again and you're gonna wonder where the time went because the time passes so quickly when you're sedated and I, I think there's a very obvious reason that the government's supporting the legalization of cannabis just like they supported you know the re-legalization of alcohol you know they set up these structures to have us advocate for these things but you know they know a little bit more about how it works, they just don't tell us about it. But, you know, they have a plan, which is to sedate us. But if, if you use cannabis for the right reasons, it can be helpful. I feel that it, it pulls you back and holds you down like a slingshot. And then when you do quit, it lets you go and you fly. So, you know, I'll hopefully be back tomorrow or maybe the next day with another video. Uh, I hope you guys are drawing some inspiration. Maybe you can take on uh, a challenge of your own. And yeah, peace out.